Hello everyone, Marcus Wolf here, welcoming you all back to another episode of Disco Elysium. Quick disclaimer, don't mind if my voice kicks in and out every now and again, uh, I think it's the wonky weather honestly, it's, it's summer like hot one yesterday, now it's kinda springtime wind cool today, it, it's kinda messing with my voice, so it might sound a bit gravelly and dying, kinda like Harry is right now mentally. <laughs> <laughs> mentally dying. Uh, and of course, last we left off, we... <laughs> I st I This is like four days since I made the last episode. I still remember quite clearly giving her that uh, decorative big-ass check thing. And it, she actually gave us 25 real. I was like, okay, sure. Whatever. We just robbed the place, courtesy of the... Uh, <laughs> The head of the Debardeurs Union. Hallelujah. Oh, speaking of the Debardeurs Union. He was kind of, you know... At first, he was not intimidating. He felt kind of like, oh, yeah, that's a very funny character. Ha, ha, ha. And then later on, it became like, oh, yeah, he knows a lot more than he's letting on. Don't let his attitude and his demeanor fool you. He is a very scary person. Uh, well, maybe not scary, but frightening. Frightening in that you don't know what he's capable of, and that makes it all the more scarier, to me at least. That he knows everything about you, and you know nothing about him. So, how'd you like a harbor? You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. Eh, it was nice enough for a harbor. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. He nods, he notes solemnly, then turns to you. A wide smile adorning his face. Right. You talk to the boss eye to eye. Like men of the plane. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Uh, well, do you any idea who killed a hanged man? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? He shakes his head solemnly. Well, the harbor is a prime area of suspicion. Uh, in your honest opinion, person to person, not as officer to witness, are the dock workers involved in the killing? What a thought. Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Eh, uh, pushed how? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. Enemy combat. What exactly does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. So, does that mean you killed him? And by the way you're speaking, it, it kind of leads into that a bit. I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men, with all sorts of skills. He's not lying about not doing it himself. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. He takes a sip from his flask. It feels odd to asking that question when, out of sequence, we've already questioned the <laughs> the guys at the at the Whirling and Rags restaurant. It's kind of weird. Um. Oh yeah, Everard did mention you had a key to some kind of door. A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? Uh... He said something about, uh... A, a weasel? Possibly a, a whistleblower? Oh, say no more. I got you. He taps the side of his nose with a little wink. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. <clears throat> Working class solidarity, as they say. Uh... Sure, of course. I mean, I mean, well, I don't know how to respond to this. <laughs> I, mm, I don't, I don't know how to respond to this because I don't want to do this. I mean, I, I, this is why I like playing these kinds of games and watching people play these kind of like games where it thinks and branch out based on your decisions. I feel like outside of like people trying to make meme qualities and stuff 
people tend to respond in a way that fits their mindset. <laughs> and while I do, uh, while I am practicing my ad libbing skills with games like this, the fact that I couldn't come up with good ad libbing kind of tells you my mindset is not in <laughs> wanting to do this. But, ugh, whatever. Oof. Well, I did hear something about a weasel, and doesn't sound like a local polar weasel, if uh, you get my drift. <laughs> polar weasel? Oh, I know what you mean. I'm pretty sure he's actually Occidental, though. So you're going to be committing fratricide, my racist friend. Oh dear, uh, I did not mean to- oh, oh, okay, oops. <laughs> What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rags. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. It means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. His gaze wanders off into the distance. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Okay, um... Is there anything else I should know about mm, this basement door that you just gave me access to? This, uh, weasel person? Things like, you know, I don't... When when he'll be home? Is he even home to begin with? I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. The man takes a big sip from his flask. He means he's not going to tell you, cause he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhart. Hmm. Okay. Why don't we change the subject a little bit? Do you happen to know anything about the Hardy Boys? Los Hardys? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Everhart's law. But really, they're just like you. I would politely disagree, though I can see your point of view. And why exactly is it you guys are striking? I mean, it's been a good while. We're negotiating our share. Uh, I'm sorry, share? Aye. He seems pleased with himself. Um... So... Wait, when you say shares... You're not talking about, like, wages, uh, better pensions, healthcare, and all that? This stuff. They already cover. Uh, for, for, forgive me for asking, but shouldn't you be grateful then? I mean, it's a lot more than most people have around these parts. Never grateful. Were we ever grateful, we'd have nothing. You fight for every piece. Okay, and... How large of a share are you are you asking for? Group wise, I mean. All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board so they could take part in the decision making process. This seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page. Communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. I, I, okay, I, I will admit that. The idea does sound communistic. That everyone, from the lowly janitor to the high-ranking official of Everard's desk, will have a say in the decision-making process. Isn't that what a union is for, though? I mean... I'm not part of a union simply because my job does not allow for unionization. And no, it's it's an office job, but yeah, we don't allow unionization. But a case in point, if you're part of the U of a union, the union would then represent you amongst the higher ups of the board. You know, n negotiate with you. I mean, negotiate on your behalf for benefits, better pay, better working conditions, yada yada yada, and in turn. The people that are, um, that that are, that are in the union, like a part of the union, will have a say in those matters. They will vote 
as part of whether the union shall bring it up. If it's all, if it's a majority, yes, the union brings it up to the higher ups or to the opposition side. That that's what a union is. I I I I know that is that Everest part of the Debardeur's union, but wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it be I'm, okay? I won't say better. Wouldn't it be more feasible to simply? Have a union representative collect the will of the people, if you will, and then that one union rep goes to, like, say, Evrot, Claire, and say, these are our demands. It's like, I, I, I guess in this idea where every single person in the job gets a part of the decision-making process would speed things up along. However, it's just think about that. Yes, again, the idea is communistic. But if enough people wanted to say, okay, everyone get a 100% raise, yay! Well, that's great and all. Econ the economy has just tanked. <laughs> or, everyone get 10 days vacation, yay! It's in the middle of the worst um, uh, pandemic in history. Okay, that was a bad example, but you know what I mean. It's like, oh great, the world is screwed then. You know, see? That's where the problem lies on this idea. I get what they're saying, that everyone has a part in the decision making process but if a majority of which would be workers all say they want 10 days vacation you damn well bet they're going to get 10 days vacation regardless of whatever's happening in the world around them <laughs> yeah equal pay equal power and all that yes except it now becomes a dictatorship from uh, a, a dictatorship that is power heavy on the laborer side. Not quite even. Uh, the boss man of rots. What can you tell me about him? I think it's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. Um, and what exactly does the boss bossing the union entail? I guess you kind of get to be the village chief. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties. Watches out for his own. By that, you mean corruption? By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? We live in a harsh and disordered world, see? And in this world, the old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. Mm. Yeah, that I could agree with you there. I mean... He has his office in what? What is like a pile of uh, shipping containers? Pretty ascetic. Uh, okay, he's reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. That would be a manipulative illusion. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway, and moralism is the most corrupt of them all. This man has political theory. And it has not failed him today. No, he does have political theory. I, I agree with that. And I do appreciate his mindset. He's not trying to go way one way or way the other way. He's he's clearly on the side of the laborers. Very clearly. But he's not above... He, 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 he's not blinded by his political viewpoint that he, that he won't agree Everett Claire is somewhat lavish and is quite clearly corrupt. Though he did use that to piggyback into saying everything is corrupt, which, in, in true fashion of the world, yes. No matter what you want, how you want to say, what you want to say, how you want to view it, everything is just slightly, at, at least slightly corrupt. Everything is. It, and unfortunately, it's the way of life. We, we try to say it doesn't happen. And yes, businesses try not to be corrupt because the law likes to take in corrupt businesses, but not corrupt higher folks. <laughs> Question mark. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's, there's always a little bit of corruption in our, in our daily lives, whether we like it or not. Sure thing. This was great. You feel mentally reinvigorated. Yeah, bye. Yeah, thank you for talking to us, uh, my dear friend. That really was quite informative, I will admit that. Hello, sir. I don't want to talk to you, but I feel like I have to. Right to work! Right to 
don't work. Shame on you. Dude, you really sound like you're just parodying. You're, you're not sounding original. God damn. Um, I'm just gonna ask this point blank. Are you a mercenary hired by Wild Pines? Hell no. I'm just an honest scab. I won't have talk like that around here. You understand? It just has to be said. That was not a convincing lie. Hell no, I'm just an honest scab. That didn't sound too convincing, I'll be honest. But... Are a tribunal being convened by any chance? Fuck it, Bob. He breathes out slowly, his giant chest deflating, and his mouth slightly open. I'm going to interpret that as a yes. There's a tribunal, and it won't be long until it's ready. How about you fuck off now, huh? Okay, of course. The lieutenant says, his voice a soothing calm. He looks at you. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You being an honest gad don't sound convincing like I just said. Fucking loincloth. He stares you down mutely for a second. Loincloth? Now you see, that's not really what a scab would say, is it? Better not to press the issue further, sire. He seems tense. Okay. The man's breathing steadies, but his eyes are still narrow. Slowly, he's trying to get his right-to-work dance back on. Oh, I'm sure you are, sir. Bye. You're... I... What you have just said right there, even though it was two words and si mostly silent, was the most truthful I've ever heard you speak, I feel. And I like that truthfulness. Now we can go ahead into the whirling in rags and talk to the cook because I feel like the cook has a little something. Hi! Hey guys, I'll, I'll be right back, okay? I promise. Maybe next episode, but I'll be back, I promise. Uh, I'm <laughs> just like, walking by. Okay, next episode. Can I help you? Uh, anything? Another thing. Okay, another thing. Yes. Bye. Yes, 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 bye. Uh, bye? Jesus. Let's go to the cook, and my mic box keeps falling. I don't know if you guys are hearing me pawing at my mic stand every now and again, but it keeps trying to fall, and it his sucks. Utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Uh, Leo, uh, so I've heard Leo uh, over at the harbor that you're friends with Manana. Is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. I thought so. So, what exactly is in that borscht you're making there? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. Oof. You know, that's a question. And then wait for me to speak. Um, yes! Hmm. Horse need more vodka? He picks up a bottle from the shelf. Horse needs more vodka. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. You know, that's fair. I was thinking something a lot more nefarious, like actual drugs. But, you know what? That's fine. Of course. Vodka. Now that makes a very, very special borscht indeed. Turn it up and then ask for some yourself. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea. Honestly, the place is a powder keg. What could go wrong? I mean, the, the entirety of Martinez is already kind of questionable, so let's turn the vodka up. He smiles, nodding vigorously, then pours half a bottle of vodka into the pot. With a whistle, he stirs the brew. Oh boy. <laughs> I would think it would have cooked out, but then again, then again, with that amount of alcohol and soup not necessarily being at a roaring boil... Yeah, that, that that would be a strong soup. Uh, 
Gorsi, could I have some of the some of that borscht? He smiles and nods enthusiastically, and chattering away in his language, ladles some brew into a small thermal cup, then hands it to you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I don't think I need anything else. Oh boy, what what do we get ourselves into here? <laughs> uh, where is? Ah, uh, here we go. Uses left three. Uh, Gorsi's brew of alcohol. Okay, okay, so it was basically free alcohol, but I feel like considering the hoops that we had to jump through to get this, which was not many hoops at all, but considering the what we had to go through to get this, I would have thought it would be giving me a little bit more bonuses to, to offset it. But no, it's pretty much the same as the Commodore Red. So, question mark? Though at the same time, I understand that this was free as opposed to the Commodore Red that we had to either locate or buy. So, I suppose that offsets, but I would have preferred maybe one more bonus stat for this because it's good food and alcoholic, you know? So, I would have thought that'd be great, but that's just me. Shrug. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, threaten the poor boy. Wait a minute, can I talk to you, Elizabeth? Because I know your name. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? She crosses her arms. Only to ask, are you Lizzie? Elizabeth? Miss Beaufort? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Titus Hardy. She points to the tall man by the table. Even though she has excellent control over herself, Something moved behind her eyes, in the way she stands, in her face. She was not expecting me to actually know her name. You weren't expecting me to know your name, were you? Well, <laughs> it's not it's not too hard when there's a fellow called Easy Leo. Sure likes to talk a lot, don't he? You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. And that is true. But allow me to ask, are you the Hardy girl? I am not. She says dryly. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutante International. <laughs> yeah, this I'll agree with her, Glenn. She went to law school. So fucking what? Lots of models are actually really smart people, fuckwad. No, Glenn. They aren't. Her tone is cold and uninvolved. This didn't change her opinion of you. Oh, I know that rhetoric. And me having this small little conversation where she actually seems a bit human did not change my opinion of her either. But I will defend what her opinion is and that she's not a model. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. Fair enough. Bye, Elizabeth Beaumont. May we meet in a different time. A.K.A. never. <laughs> if I had anything to say about that guy, I really don't want to talk to her. I just, I, I really just don't like her. I'm sorry. I know I keep saying that, but I... I just truly don't like her. I... By that, I don't mean that I don't like her caricature. I like the way she was written. I don't like... Her as a person. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bye, 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 bye. Yep, yep, yep. Can I get this body that or have I already tried? Yeah. Yep, never mind. Okay, bye. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, never mind. Bye. Yeah, never mind. Bye. Uh, oh no, wait, behind the whirling right. Okay, no, never mind. It's all the way up there. Oh, that's gonna slightly suck. I am not gonna appreciate that. I'll be right back. And we are back. Welcome to this little basement. I think it's this, because they did say behind the whirling in rags, and... Well, this is behind the whirling in rags. Cough, cough. <laughs> Hello? This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. 
Well, uh, a lion's head. What is this, Ebenezer Scrooge's door? I, I think his door knocker was a lion's head. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought of. I don't know why I just thought of Ebenezer Scrooge. You knock silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in. The lieutenant looks uncomfortable. Yeah. The door is slick with rain. You don't hear any movement inside. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Uh, Kim, what's your opinion of whatever this is that we're doing? Let's be honest. This isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day tells you something new about yourself. The lieutenant replies, still inspecting the padded door. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. Fair enough. The lieutenant merely nods in response. Well, let's go. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. There's nothing else to do than to leave and tell Everard. No conceivable reason for you to intrude on the premises. There might be important information in the apartment. I mean, there might. Uh, yes. Do I or do I not? I don't know. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I am so curious to go into that room. And yet Everard has to Okay, you know what? No. No. Everard has demonstrated that he is a very capable man of garnering information with a snap of a finger. If I'm going to try and one-up him sometime in the future, I need to play nice. I, I, I need to do my best to not get on his bad side. And if that means not saving my curiosity, because I am really goddamn curious about that room, then so be it. I will instead... Do as I'm told, like a good little dog, and see Everart in a few moments. You know what? Honestly, it's times like this that I wish there was a fast travel system. Because going back and forth, even though it was just like, well, a minute and a half since I last restarted this recording. This is a, a very long travel time. And a fast travel system would be a ease of use, a ease of life, but eh. Okay, never mind. Uh, yep, never mind. Okay, yeah, there's nothing from you. I thought there might be something new, but, uh... But yeah, a fast travel system would be nice. Maybe they'll I implement it once we have access to someplace outside of this area. As in when the bridge comes back in, in order, but... I think right now, we're just in this little area uh, of town, of the city. So fast travel within this part of the city is... Not... You know, available. <laughs> oh, autosave. Yay, thank you so much. Just what I wanted for Christmas. Hey, Everard. Mr. Dubois, every worker... He leans towards you, waiting for you to complete his sentence. A member of the board? That's right, Mr. Dubois. I see the socialist democratic fervor now burns in your heart, too. How can I help you today? Well, I did it, Everett. I made it even shadier. What? The big man looks at you surprised. The brew. The shady, shady brew. Oh, how could I forget your little side project? Well done, Harry. Well done. Don't even tell me what it was. But good job. I love it when workers take the initiative like this. <laughs> well, thank you. And aside from that little project, I've also opened the door that you've asked me. So can we please discuss the murder now? I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. One question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? He's trying to figure out if you're lying. Hey, look. The deal wasn't for me to go inside, so I didn't. 
I upheld my end of the bargain, in full. You're right, Harry. You only had to unlock the door, which you did. So we're all good here. See, I knew it. He has eyes everywhere. If I went in, he would know. He was testing you, and you succeeded. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is going to be good. For both our sakes, I hope so. Now, I've heard about some connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. So I've heard. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? A security contractor. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire. He performs a motion as if spraying bullets from a machine gun. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Sadamaritsa, you name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the village elephant? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village, but the mercs and their brutality are very real. Eh, uh, fair. I just want to make sure that you weren't talking in code. Uh, feel free, go ahead. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. He laughs. Just a container? You, you don't physically go out? Yes. I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them. All hardened commando types. You know, Everard, for a man of your demeanor, I believe that. That explains why you are in your office is in this cargo container. Damn, but you must be brave and no fear because just a little innocent swing and all your files just fall over. They must be bolted shut, I guess. One of them got downright suicidal. Getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy. The one who likes hanging out and trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is... We dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. Okay, so from what it sounds like, the whole neighborhood might be in on this. Which is fair, but who exactly was the one that did the pushing? There's a militant wing inside the union. A group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. That sounds a bit like organized crime. They're like you guys. Idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen. And if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again, that sounds like organized crime. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. <laughs> I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. 
They're Martinez boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. He places a lot of faith in that lawyer girl. Perhaps this is a tactical error? Anyway. And how do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Well, I did happen to hear of uh, a name, Krennel, this time around. It might have been Sediment before, I I'm honestly not sure. Of course. You're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. Well, they might like you, but I don't know how much you can help with this. The remaining mercenaries, they're organizing a tribunal to take on the Hardys. Tribunal? That sounds serious, Harry. We union men should be shitting ourselves. I wish you hadn't told me that. I'm gonna lose sleep over this. Let's change the subject. He's clearly happy about the tribunal. Hmm... You know, for as much as you're saying that the people like you and that's why you're in this position, you don't seem overly worried about this. Oh, Harry, what do I really think about the tribunal? You're trying to climb to second base with old Everard before you've even courted him properly. He wants you to do more things for him before. Alright, um, then how about you tell me a bit more about Titus Hardy and his crew? They are simply fine young men, all seven of them. Exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's second in command? They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martinez and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. I don't... It's very strange that I do like the Hardy Boys. I do. I actually really do. Despite the fact that they're all murderers and they're... Very, and they're just a little bit too vigilante for my tastes. But, Everett Claire is telling the truth here. I can, even when my discussion with them a couple episodes ago, I can tell that the Hardy Boys are trying in their way to maintain some semblance of order and, and peace uh, within uh, within Martinez. So, I have to agree with Everett's viewpoint there. I do. <laughs> And uh, you mentioned a lawyer girl to watch over him and his men? Oh, Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. <laughs> well, sometimes good intentions come back with... with unknown consequences. Uh, by the way, I have met the Hardy Boys already. Do you... Think you can ask them to cooperate with me? But of course! It's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. You can now go and tell Titus about this. See what he has to say. Also, Harry, here's five real. Uh, wait. Um, no, no, I'm not thankful. It's not that I'm thank not being thankful or anything, but why are you giving it to me? I'm not giving you anything. I'm just holding out five real. Ooh, this... Um, well, then, uh, 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 thank you. 
The lieutenant watches you pocket the banknote. He looks a little puzzled. I'm puzzled too, because that could go both ways. I could refuse it, and he'll remember it and be less cooperative with me. Or I can take it, run the risk of, of him using this to say that I am in the palm of his hand. See, this could go both ways. Ay vey. But, I'm in a position that I need information. And, like as not, Everard Claire. Well, Titus and, and, uh, Titus and his gang have also been quite open, honestly, but... Everard Claire is my second great source of information about this area. Joyce is also very good for information, except for the fact that she only came to this area recently. So she doesn't know much about the area. Oh god, it, there's a lot of juggling around here of who I want to have close to me. You, you know the old adage, keep your friends closer and your enemies closer, or something like that. Good boy. A real team player. Now, do you have any more questions? Uh, no, not at the moment, but if I do, I promise I'll come ask you about them. Was it a good tour? I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin A's. And, of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But... It's like I can't completely trust you. Yet. Yet? So, that means you're leaving the door open, right? Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left. So you have to be a social democrat. He's been hurt too much in the past. By men who aren't social democrats. Well... To be fair, I suppose you are right not to trust me, to some degree. I take care of me. I'm a hustler. I grind. I'm a money engineer. It's what I do. To survive. Perfect, Harry. That's perfect. My version of the left is not against the companies. It's with the companies. Honestly, what I have in mind is a business proposal. A left-wing business proposal, but still... I'm surprised he accepted that answer. <laughs> that... I'm surprised he accepted that answer. That really was the one I leaned towards the best. Okay, sure. Hmm. And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper. And then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. Uh, do you mind if I ask what these signatures are for? I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth center in Martin Aids. It will be righteous. We're gonna get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. And where is this place exactly? On the coast, Harry. Across the canal. There's a cul-de-sac there. A little village, they're calling it. A gloomy place. You'll find it. I trust your detective skills, Harry. Okay, uh, a, a cul-de-sac village. What exactly will happen to the people living there? They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth centre designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the street? I mean, not that I'm against the building of a youth centre, I mean, especially in an area like this, well, it'd be great. But are you sh absolutely sure? that no one's going to be displaced, uh, homeless. Am I? Harry, these people, Martin A's is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. 
We're going to build a youth centre there. The value of their properties goes up and kids have a place to play in. I'm looking out for these people, not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martinez, not just the harbour. Uh, Kim, your opinion on this? It depends. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Clare was very useful. He studies Everard. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martin A's and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. He's saying as little as possible, as vaguely as he can, deliberately omitting things. Maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. As in who specifically within the uh, Hardy Boys did the hanging? I don't know. There are so many things going on here. There's so many things being juggling around. It's Now, I pride myself in being able to remember details in video games and, and books and movies. But even this is starting to go over my head a little bit. There's a lot of information to juggle. There really is. My goodness. Uh... Uh... All right. If I happen to be there, I'll ask. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here. He hands you an open white anvil. Open, huh? You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I hear there is some trouble with the water lock, but they should fix it by Wednesday morning. Once you have the signatures, Mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then I know we can do business together. He runs his finger through his thin hair. Uh, can we go over a few details concerning the murder again? Most certainly, Harry. Nothing brightens my day like brainstorming these things with you. <laughs> Never mind, I've heard all I had to say. By all means, Harry. What's on your mind? Uh, nothing. Uh, I'll go ahead on to that task for you, but like you said, they won't fix it again until Wednesday morning, so hold tight. See you soon, Debarder. Just kidding, but not too much. Yes, I I'm sure you're not kidding too much. Oh, boy. What am I getting myself into working with this man? Like, really, what am I... What am I getting myself into? I don't know. Oh my god, I can interact with this envelope? A white envelope with a stamp attached to the upper right corner handed to you by Everett Clare. Inside are some legal documents with two names printed. Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. Both signatures are required. You know, I will read that in the next episode. Right now, there is no point. And I want... Can I please get out of here? And I can't help but wonder... Can I now... Enter that room? You know, the uh, the, the the room that I so conveniently opened and... Uh, just to get on Everard's good side and not commit breaking and, and... Breaking and entering? I don't know. I don't know. There's so many things to do. There really is. I could try talking to Joyce. I have an envelope to read. But I also want to talk to the Hardy Boys. Because I want to at least try... To get them to cooperate with me. I mean, I do like the gang. They're, they're rough around the edges. And, like I said, a bit too vigilante for my tastes. But in terms of Revishol and Martinez, their heart is in the right place. So is Elizabeth's, although... Uh, I... I... <sighs> I can't believe I said that. I really can't. But I have to admit, even Elizabeth's, the lawyer girl's heart is in the right place. In terms of trying to def defend uh, the well-being of Martinez. Which in this case would be Titus and the Hardy Boys. So I agree about that. Even though I don't agree with her. <laughs> with her demeanor. Uh, behavior. But that's neither here nor there. We will continue this all in the next episode. Where there's quite a few things I can see us trying to do 
but I'm not sure what it is we'll be doing. So that will be another problem for me in a couple days when I pick this game up again. Because <laughs> I need to have my voice rest. Ugh. Later, everyone.